So, what brings you in today? So, I'm having trouble. Um, I have an 11 year old daughter who I'm having trouble re relating to, um, managing or helping her manage through her emotional roller coaster that she seems to live on these days. And so, I get frustrated with with her and then I get frustrated with myself because I get frustrated with her and so it sort of stresses me out and I don't know how to help her mm -hmm. so it makes me stressed it makes me feel like a bad parent understandable it's a lot of stress yeah um, so sometimes people have different ways of describing issues in their lives to different people like their family, friends, and other members of the community, such as colleagues and people like that. Um, would you, do you think you would describe your problem differently to any of them? Well, I think I would probably, like if I was talking to my friends about it, um, I might be a little bit more open about how frustrated I get mm -hmm. than if I was maybe talking to a coworker Right. So, that might be the difference. Okay. So, what troubles you most about this issue with your daughter? Um, that I am just struggling to be a good parent, like, to understand her, to help her through it. Sometimes I just don't know what to do. I, like, feel mm -hmm. like I'm, like, totally lost. And... Yeah, I just feel kind of totally lost. That can be pretty common. A lot of parents feel that way. What do you think is causing this issue with either your daughter or the um, frustration you're having? What do you think is at the root of it? Well, I think my daughter is just 11 and she's on an emotional roller coaster. She doesn't know how to handle all those feelings. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I think... Uh, because of a lot of the changes in you know, my life um, in the last couple of years, physical changes, COVID has affected everybody. Um, I lost my job, but then I now have a new job, and at the new job, I got a promotion. And so, I mean, just a lot of changes. So then I'm not handling, I get, I get frustrated with her, and I think it's because I'm just tired and overwhelmed. That is a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of changes in the last couple of years. So, so yeah. Do you think that other people in your life, such as your family, friends, and you know, colleagues, would see um, your problem the same way as you do? Or, well, I think that my friends, my friends would. Um, especially those that have daughters that are the same age. Uh, my husband, he just thinks that Bobby, or our daughter, needs to just buck it up and, and not get so emotional. And, and so that he, you know, he doesn't worry about, like, it like I do. So, but she doesn't, all, she also doesn't come to him and talk to him about a whole lot of it. So he doesn't see it. And, but he's not a worrier like I am and I'm a worrier. So I worry, I worry about her. Mm -hmm. That's natural. Yeah. Are there any kinds of support that make your problem better, such as support from your family and friends? Or... Yeah. Uh, talking to my friends help the one, like I said, the ones that have daughters, that's helped a lot. Um, I just talk to, they're more like acquaintances, not necessarily friends. Mm -hmm. The, um, parents of the, or actually the, the mothers of the, the Bobby's basketball team. Okay. I just talked to them this last weekend, just in general over like that whole emotional roller coaster and, um, how they deal with it. And so that was kind of helpful to talk to people that I don't know very well but that they're experiencing the same things. Mm -hmm. So that was helpful. a little bit of validation of dealing with that. And yeah. Yeah. And that I wasn't necessarily, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't necessarily just me that things like that, or just our family or whatever. A little that bit are of commonality like that. there. 
<laughs> yeah. A little more messy. Yep. Um, are there any kind of stressors uh, in your life that make it a problem worse, such as money, um, family problems? Work, I mean, I know you brought up COVID and um, um, work and. I think it's when I. What makes it worse is when I'm tired, like when I'm just overwhelmed with with all the external stuff, mm -hmm. and then if it I can't leave it at work or I can't leave it. At, you know, and it comes home with me. Mm -hmm. So when I get overwhelmed, then I don't handle the roller coaster that I'm on with her as well as I would if I was well rested. Okay. So sometimes when we're looking at issues in the present, we can sometimes look at the past with how we were brought up, how we were raised, um, some of our own um, communities we belong to, the family we're from, our race and ethnic standards, um, backgrounds, genders, sexual orientation, all that different stuff. Um, for you, what would be the most important aspects of what makes you, you? I would think that it's um, how I was raised and the experiences I had growing up, not necessarily my race or because it wasn't really that, or um, I suppose our socio and economic status had something to do with it. I mean, we were pretty poor growing up, but um, but I think it's more of the experiences that I had that made me made it very important to me to be a good parent, mm -hmm. to be dependable, to take care of my kids, and so that's always been my focus. And so feeling like now, feeling like I. I'm not doing a, a very good job with her and those and and the emotional part of it makes me feel like I'm not a I'm not making I'm not not doing what I want to do which is be a good parent. So I still think my the the things the experiences I had growing up probably okay. affected me the most. Do you think any of those make a big difference in this specific issue we're having? Oh, yeah. In what way? Um, well, because some of those emotional, those, some of those things I went through just made um, me insecure about a lot of things. And so when I'm overwhelmed or tired, those insecurities come through a little bit more. I feel them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Then when I'm well rested and taking care of myself and exercising and doing all those things. Gets a little deeper for you. Yeah. 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 Um, are there any aspects of your um, background and your history that make a, um, are causing any more concern or other difficulties in your life for you? No, I don't think so. Something that affects you in too many other ways? Oh, I don't really think so. Okay. Sometimes I, like, those things that, those experiences I had growing up, you know, if I'm not, you know, if I'm, I'm trying to think here, make it a little harder to do the things, like, take care of myself the way I know that I need to, like, eat right, exercise, things like mm -hmm. that, just because... A tendency to fall back to that stress eating kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, stress eating, that's a, one of the things that I do. So so I, I have a tendency to fall back to that pattern. Okay. I know that I, I know it's there. I know it's what I do. And so then I just have to turn it around. But Well, that's a pretty natural segue into the next um, section, which is talking about coping skills and ways oh. of getting... Uh -huh. Yeah. into um, dealing with our issues that we have in my life and sometimes people have various different ways of dealing with those issues such as stress eating stress and other eating. things That's um me. so other than stress eating what <laughs> other um things have you done to cope with this issue um deep breath <laughs> deep breathing <laughs> sometimes Sometimes I do this self-talk thing in my head, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, just like to remind myself that 
you know, she's having, she's struggling, she's having trouble with her emotions, she can't tell me what she's feeling right now, that's what sometimes frustrates me, it's like, I, I just need, I want her to tell me what's going on, and she, and then when she can't, like, verbalize it, then I get frustrated, because I'm impatient, <laughs> so, so it's just reminding myself that when you're in that zone, and you're in your, you know, downstairs brain, whatever you want to call it, you can't verbalize, and you don't probably, she probably doesn't know, and my getting frustrated with her doesn't help that. Mm -hmm. So it's re reminding myself of those things. But then it's always helped me if I can, like, exercise and get an exercise routine. And I don't have that right now. So that's what I need to get back to doing something like that that I really enjoy. Those are the things that help me. Stress eating doesn't necessarily, sometimes it does help in the moment, but then I feel worse about that later because mm -hmm. it doesn't, in the end, doesn't do me any good. So, yeah. So you brought up the exercise in the past. What other kinds of um, self-help and coping skills and treatment options and stuff have you used in the past to deal with other problems or problems like this? Um, I've gone to counseling. A couple different, probably times throughout my life probably th maybe three three four three times maybe not exactly sure um and then i have it on a, on one occasion just taken um antidepressant for just a short period of time um those probably the main things um but it does really it does really help when you have friends or family that you can talk to and that mm -hmm. helps me too just to get it out so what kind of, so i know you said that talking with friends and family helps a lot and you really like to process through verbally with things mm -hmm. so what types of help and treatments would you find most useful and least useful when dealing with these kinds of issues well I think if you can find somebody to talk to that you trust, I think that just talking it out is probably the most helpful for me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, just to get it out, I think talking is probably, I think, one of the most beneficial ways of dealing with things. Um, not really a big huge fan of medication though I know there's anti-anxiety mm -hmm. things out there and there's whatever out there but I'm not really a huge fan of even trying that or doing gotcha. that so um, I think that just like spending time with family and, and doing stuff being active can help mm -hmm. getting a routine doing things that you love to do Because do you think there's ever been like a barrier that's kept you from getting the help you need in life? Well, I guess, you know, maybe when I was younger, not um, recognizing the fact that I needed help okay. and that then and where to go for help, like not knowing necessarily where to go for help. Um, that when I was younger um, and not really having a support system when I was, you know, teens to, to, to have, you know, somebody to tell me that if I would go have gone and talked to a counselor that things might have, you know, gone, gone differently or gotten better. Um, I didn't learn that stuff till I was older. So it's probably just not knowing and having that support system when I was younger would have been the barrier um, financially, I suppose, at some point in time in my life. It might have made it a little more difficult because you have to figure that out. But it didn't necessarily, once once I knew that I needed the counseling, then you, I figured out a way, even if the, you know, financially it wasn't sound, I guess. Um, but really no other barriers, I don't think. Okay. So keeping in mind those things that have worked in the past and um, the things you've learned throughout your experience, um, what do you, what kind of help do you think would be most useful for you at this time to help you with this problem? Um, I, uh, 
yeah, I'm not exactly sure, truly. Because I've been trying to figure it out as to whether I needed to go in and see about, like, if, like, my anxiety and my, you know, with all the changes and everything that's happening, do I need to go and talk to the doctor about some anti-anxiety, some medication? I just don't know what I think that's probably the answer. Is there anything that your your friends and family have suggested to you that you have um, put any thought towards or... No, they really haven't suggested anything. They just pretty much validate my feelings, I guess, more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, does that help to any amount? Yeah, absolutely. It does help. I truly think I need to get an, a, find an exercise routine. Mm -hmm. Something that I can go do and feel good about doing. I think that would help a lot. So then when I do have to try to like help manage when when bobby is doing it rolling through the roller coaster i think i could handle it better okay so sometimes doctors and patients misunderstand each other because they come from different backgrounds have different um, expectations or orientations right um have you been concerned about this and is there anything that we can do to provide you with the care you need in any of these areas I guess I haven't been concerned about that. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your honesty and coming to the session today and talking. And I hope that we can come up with some ways to help you with this problem. And I hope we can see you next week. Thank you.